I'm Susan. On behalf of the Highland Park Public Library, I'd like to welcome you to Library in Your Living Room. I'm pleased to present today, Making a Lego Plan Using Tinkercad. Thank you for joining me. In order to create a plan in Tinkercad, you'll need a Tinkercad account. So if you go to tinkercad.com, you can sign up for a free account. <clears throat> I'm logged into mine, as you can see. And to get started, I'm just going to click on Create New Design. While it's booting up, I want to explain a few things. Tinkercad seems to work best in Google Chrome. It will work in Firefox as well. It also is easiest to use with a mouse, but it also works with a trackpad. And you can use it with a touch screen. However, if you use it with a touch screen, there is a glitch that occasionally it does not save your work. So you have to go in on your own and save. So I suggest not using a touch screen. Let's talk about how you maneuver things in the in Tinkercad first. This is your work plane. Think of that as your tabletop. On a mouse, if you right click and drag, you can change your view of your tabletop. If you're uncomfortable with right clicking and dragging, you can use this cube and you can jump to certain views, top, edge, corner. I always like to start on the edge. To zoom in using a mouse, if you have a scroll, a wheelie scroller, you can scroll in and out using the wheelie. If you don't, you have your zoom in and your zoom out over on the left side. To create an object, all you do is use your shapes on the side. It comes with a whole selection of shapes. It comes with some fancy things too, texts and numbers, characters, connectors. We're going to stick with basic shapes today. So I'm going to build a castle, and my castle is going to have four walls and four towers. So to create a wall, I'm going to pull a box in and drop it. There it is. I don't want it to be a box. I want it to be wall shaped, so I need to resize it. I have different choices for how to resize. I can use the black dots to change one axis only. Or I can use the white box to change both axes at the same time, the X and the Y. This white box on the top makes the Z axis change, makes it taller or shorter. If I wanted to change all the axes at the same time in the same portion, I would hold down the shift key while I drag one of the white boxes. So now I've made a basic wall. To move it, I'm just going to click on it and drag it. I want two of these, one behind the other, and I want two of them over on the side. So the easiest thing to do is select the first one I made and hold down the control key and type the letter C. That'll copy it and then type the letter V, as in Victor, to paste it. And now I can move that box over. I can paste another one and move it. But, of course, I want it facing the other way, so I'm going to have to turn it. That's what these double-headed arrows are for. So I'm going to grab a double-headed arrow, and I can turn it. Now, I could try to do it by eye and get it exactly right, but that's kind of hard. So the easy thing is when you drag, if you notice, there's a number here. That's the degrees I've turned it. So if I click on that number, I know I want to make it a 90 degree turn, so I can just hit 90. And now it's perfectly square. And now I'm going to copy that one, Control C, and paste it, Control V. And now I have two walls facing the other way. So here's my castle so far. It's a little lopsided. So I want to line these two up, and I want to line these two up. So I'm going to click on this one, and then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click on this one. And then I'm going to use the Align tool, which is this odd little one up in the right-hand side with the two squares, rectangles. I'm going to click on that, and that gives you dots so that you can see how you want them to align. And if you hover over a dot, it'll show you how it would move 
the object. So this would be a center align, and they both end up aligned together. This center align would align them center on here, or I could align them on the edge. I'm just going to align them on the edge. And now they're perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to take this and shift and click that, and I'm going to group them, which is using this thing that's a square and a circle combined. So now it's grouped, and they will move together because they're now one object. I'm now going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to align those two on the edge as well. So now they're lined up, and I'm going to group them, and now they move together. So now I can try and get them in a position that I like. And I think that looks pretty good for me right now. Although I'm not sure. But once I put my towers in, it'll be fine. So there I have it. I'm now going to select both of my combined objects, and I'm going to group them. And now my castle is one shape. I don't want to accidentally damage that shape. So I'm going to push it off to the side, and I'm going to click on this little lock. When I click on that, it highlights it in purple to show that it's locked. I now can't do anything to it. I can't move it. I can't turn it. I can't do anything. It's just going to sit there locked. Now I want to build my towers. I'm going to grab a cylinder because I want it to have a round base. And I'm going to push my cylinder over and turn my view so I can see it more from the top. And I'm going to push my cylinder in, and I think my tower needs to be a little wider. So I'm going to click on this. And you can see right now it's 20 by 20. I could do two things. I could hold down the shift key, and I could pull it out until it looks the size I want it to be, which made all the sizes equal. Or I could have, if I wanted to, click down there and typed in the number that I wanted. I think that's a good size, but I want it to be taller because my tower has to stand up above. So I'm going to change the Z axis, raise it up, and there I have a corner tower. Now I'm going to give it a top, and I think I'm going to use the cone. And now I'm going to look at this, and remember I made this 26 by 26, so let's just do this one. If we click on this corner, we can make this 26 by 26. So it's the same size at the base of the cone as it is at the top of the tower. I'm going to raise this up. Using that, did you see what I used? I used that little teardrop shape. I can push it down and raise it using that teardrop shape. And now I want this to be centered on this. So I'm going to click on the purple one. I'm going to click on the orange one, and I'm going to use that align tool again. And this time I'm going to use the center align. So I'm going to center align, and I'm going to center align. And now if you look, my top is centered. But if you also look at it closely, my top is floating in midair. We don't want that, so we're going to have to click on the top, zoom out so I can get that little triangle, and then we're going to shove it down until it bumps into the orange. There, now my object isn't floating anymore. It's now part of the tower. But I, I, if I turned and looked at it from a different angle, you can see I, raised, I shoved it down a little too far. I've got a little rim and I don't want that. So I'm gonna raise it up just a hair. Doink, Oop. there we go. And now it should be on it, but not floating. So I'm gonna click on the purple. I'm going to click on the orange, and I'm going to group that. So now I have a purple tower. And I'm going to do that Control-C and Control-V, 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 because I wanted four of them. And now I can decide where I want them to be in. Oop. I made a mistake. This is my undo. Now everything's back to normal again. Let's try grabbing it again. I'm going to drag this one over and put it in one corner. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to put it in that corner. Let's grab this one, 
put it in that corner and grab this one and put it in that corner. Now I could be really fancy and I could use my align tool to try to get my towers exactly right, but I don't know if I want to be that fancy. I think I'm just going to do this one by eye. So now I have my castle with my towers. Now the last thing I need to do is put a door in so people can get into my castle. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab another box, but this time I'm grabbing the gray shaded box. The gray shading means that it's a hole. You can turn any shape into a hole. If I wanted to make a spherical window, I could grab a sphere and bring it in and click on hole in its controller and now my sphere is a hole. And anything that my sphere were to touch, if I were to group it, my sphere would become a hole. I'll show you that with the box. To get rid of that sphere, I just hit the delete key. So here's my box, I'm gonna shove it in there. And I think it's a little wide, so I'm gonna make it a little skinnier. And I wanna make sure it goes all the way through, which it did. And I'm gonna line it up about where I wanna have my door, which looks about like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, it is all the way through. I might wanna shove it in a little bit further. Now remember, I said before that I had locked the red part. So if I were to group that door with that red part, it would disappear. Because when you lock a shape, it does not allow it to be changed. So before I can make the doorway, I have to click on that purple lock and unlock the red part. Now I'm just gonna grab everybody by clicking where there's nothing, going all the way across and clicking and dragging to where there's nothing and letting go. That's called a marquee selection and it gets everybody selected. And then I'm gonna group everybody. And there you have it. I have made a castle. So now here's the fun part. Let's get my castle into the middle. We're gonna turn it into a Lego plan. So if you go up to the upper right hand corner, you can see you've got different ways you can change it. And I'm gonna click on the Lego brick. When you click on the Lego brick, it brings you onto a Lego building platform. And you have different choices. So this is the most basic form of building over here. I'm gonna see how it would look if I made it a little more complex. Well, that looks much better. That looks much more like my castle. Or I could go really complex. And it would be very detailed. But I'm not sure if I want to build that complex or not. Well, that would be kind of fun. So now you see it as it would be if you built it in Legos. But as I said, you were making a plan. And the way you use the plan is that you click on the Layers tab. When you turn the Layer tab on, it breaks it down to each individual layer. So here we are on the first layer, and it shows me all the bricks that I would need to make this layer. As you can see, if I zoom in, we've got some of the long double bricks, and we have some individual single bricks. And then I just click on this arrow, and it shows me the second layer, how to build it, and the third, and the fourth. And then we're gonna go up, and when we get to our door frame, here we are in our door frame. And this is kind of funny because this brick is hanging in midair. So of course you have to get the next layer up, which will hold that brick in. And there you go. Just keep clicking on the layers. And it keeps showing you what bricks you need to complete the castle. Thanks for joining us. Please check hplibrary.org for more upcoming virtual programs where we bring library programs to you.